This is my first shot with the TSOS 1911, and you can see the trigger takes me by surprise. I just got done firing the World War II era Remington Rand 1911, and that gun has a significantly heavier trigger than the TSOS. I have no way of testing it empirically, but compared to other triggers of known weight, I'd say the TSOS breaks at around 4.5 pounds. It breaks pretty cleanly, but I can definitely feel some movement after I hit the wall. After firing a couple of single shots, I moved on to doing some rapid fire strings at 25 yards, mainly to capture POV footage and close ups of the gun firing. At this rate of fire, bisecting the bullseye with the front sight, I was managing about a 9 inch group that was hitting very low and to the left. I noticed the slide moving forward and the recoil felt different than the Remington Rand, and I attribute that to the recoil spring being a lot stiffer. In fact, every spring in this gun seems very stiff compared to the presumably well used Remington Rand. On this next string, you can see me struggle with the slide lock. At this stage, I was still getting used to the comparatively light trigger pull and much sharper slide return. You can see me overcompensate for the recoil on some of these shots as a result. After finishing up at 25 yards, I moved up to 35 feet to practice drawing and I threw in a reload as well. Here you can see me struggle with the very tight slide lock again. The gun is still hitting low and left consistently as I'm still aiming dead center of the bullseye. On my second string I experienced my first stoppage with the firearm. I didn't do any immediate action drills the entire range session as I wanted to see what kind of failures I was having. All eight of the stoppages I had were the same premature slide lock malfunction. I think it was either me, the magazines, or an issue with the slide lock itself. I know that it's possible to accidentally hit the slide lock with your offhand, but it's worth noting that seven of the eight times this malfunction occurred it was with the same magazine and it also occurred when I shot one-handed, although technically I was dual wielding. The included Checkmate magazines seem fairly low quality. They are extremely gritty, almost impossible to get the last round into when you first get them, and the two magazines actually have different followers, if that means anything. Checkmate is also the company that made the notoriously unreliable government issue M9 magazines. Funnily enough, I experienced two malfunctions with an older Checkmate government issue 1911 mag that same day. So yeah, it very well could be the magazines. When cleaning the gun, I did find copper on the slide stop, so it might also be an issue with that. At a point, the gun stopped having malfunctions, however, further testing will need to be done. Back to where we left off. Despite the stoppage, on my second magazine, I shifted my aim to the upper right of the bullseye and started to hit the black. On the next string, I get used to the stiff slide lock and do a much better mag change. But then I destroyed my target, so I had to stop shooting. Again, bringing up the springs being stiff, on this string I fumbled the reload because I didn't press the magazine release hard enough the first time. I am getting used to the stiff slide release though. After this string, I start getting very comfortable with the gun. I'm managing the recoil consistently and I'm hitting shots in the black. I've even stopped fumbling my reloads. I will note that at this point the gun was starting to give me a tender spot on my hand. This isn't hammer bite, it's just the sharp edges of the beaver tail digging into my hand. Just as I was really starting to figure out the gun, I had an absolutely terrible string. I sped it up here because I had three stoppages total out of the seven shots I fired. Two of them were back to back. Despite the stoppages, all the rounds were pretty well placed. I was focused on aiming in the upper right quadrant of the bullseye, and I believe all seven of the rounds were in the black for that string of fire. The target I'm shooting at is a standard NRA bullseye 25 yard pistol target. I'm also using a shoot and see target that's a similar diameter to the aiming black as a repair center. The next string ends with a stoppage, and the one after that opens with a stoppage. Despite the heat and malfunctions frustrating me at this point, I will say this gun was producing very good accuracy. Also of note is that this handgun wants to throw brass almost straight up and back toward the shooter. At one point I even had a brass case hit me in the face and bounce off my glasses. For these last 30 or so rounds, the gun functions without any more failures. I'm focusing just on group size here and the gun is really able to deliver. 
As mentioned before, the trigger is fairly decent and makes it easy to be accurate. The arched back strap seems to fit my hand just right, and when I present the gun, the sights naturally want to align themselves. In fact, the only thing that makes it difficult to be more accurate with this handgun are the sights, but that limitation is part of the appeal of a GI replica handgun. Even with the dinky sights, the gun still has a full-size sight radius, so it's not all bad. It's true of most handguns that they shoot better than the user, and this gun is no exception. My overall impressions are positive. It's a faithful replica of the original M1911A1. It looks and feels just like the real thing, and the gun is very well fitted and finished overall. The springs are tight, and the whole gun feels held together rock solid. Not only does it look nice, but it also does its job of throwing 45 caliber slugs pretty well. Even though I experienced more stoppages than I would have liked, at least it wasn't having failures that would indicate something seriously wrong with a major component. Due to the stoppages, however, I will say this gun definitely falls more into the category of range toy than something I would bet my life on, at least not until I've put significantly more rounds through it without failure. For my purposes, this is fine, as I never intended for it to be a carry gun. I just wanted something similar to my World War II era 1911 that I could shoot all the time without putting wear on a collectible firearm. I've already shown some of the accuracy potential of the firearm, however I think the most impressive thing about the gun is the fact that it cost me $360 after shipping. A gun made with the same manufacturing processes would easily cost double if it were made by an American firm. The value proposition of this forged frame slide and barrel 1911 is significant. Just think of all the other guns in the under $400 range. My final verdict is, if you want something to fit the look and feel of the GI 1911 in your collection, or just want something that throws 45 for fun on the range, then I recommend this firearm. For any sort of serious use, I personally wouldn't use this firearm at this stage, as my particular example had reliability issues. Anyway, that's all I got. Thanks for looking.